Neza, welcome to I Am My Brand. Thank you for sitting with me today. Thank you, Tribu. It's an honor to be here. I absolutely love you and what you stand for. You know, all about women's choice, CEO for an organization called Women's Choice, ambassador for women and how we show up in the world. You've worked with the UN. You are your brand. And along with all of that, you have 2 million followers on Instagram. So I just want to start by asking this seemingly easy, but for some very difficult solution, which is how have you as a woman in business built your brand? Yes, um, no, for sure. I'm happy to see that today a lot of women are much more active in building their brand. At least they're aware of it and the need of it. And they need uh, women like you to help them uh, do it but i feel that i was definitely an innovator in doing it 15 years ago and um for that well it's it's just that my biggest um motivation was to uh uh create impact and and um and that was my purpose and i understood and i was lucky to understand at an early stage that you can not create impact without fully being able to communicate about it and uh, for that well because i didn't have a billion dollar you know to invest in a foundation i needed to create by building my own brand to be able to build the proper partnerships and build uh and, and engage the, the the people into into what i was doing and what have been some of the stepping stones to be able to do that to say first of all i want to create the impact but then how what are some of the things that you had to do Sure. Well, um, I'll, I'll give you an example that is uh, very pragmatic in, in building the brand, which is my relationship to social media. And it applies to everyone today who everyone says that, oh, my God, I'm so bad in my social media and I would have loved to 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 create a, a stronger brand. But you need to to have a relationship to social media as a communication tool in which you're accepting everyone. I mean, you go to my LinkedIn, I don't have personal relationships on my social media. It's, it's my voice that is out there and, and you need to be completely okay with, with interacting with everyone. Like if you were on TV, I mean, when you're on TV, you don't choose who's your audience, you know, you need to be clear about your messaging and you need to be consistent about that. But coming back to the impact part, how you create impact, you need to first understand how you want to impact the world. And there are so many ways and you need to choose one way, not 10 ways and start there. I, I love that because I, 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 I teach on that. Right? I teach on you don't need 10 ways. You just need one yeah. way. Um, you are so prolific for working with multinational organizations, non-for-profits, charities, with one sole focus, and that's to impact women. Has that always been the goal or has it kind of organically happened in your career? Yes, it organically happened because first of all, when I landed my mission for the United Nations, it was a childhood dream. And, uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It, wasn't, you know, like a, a common thing. I was a self-made entrepreneur from the age of 24 to 27. I had developed 12 stores, uh, in, in Morocco out of franchises that I brought from the U.S. and then decided to move on to my next venture because I proved to myself that I could be a savvy entrepreneur and decided to go back into my childhood dream, the dream of a six years old girl who once thought to herself, that she would love to do humanitarian work for the United Nations. So here I was, I was 27, you know, thought to be crazy from my surrounding to leave the business that I had to, to enroll in a humanitarian journey. And, um, and, and I, I, I built myself to fit that mission that was there, built my branding when I was competing with probably much more qualified people for that mission. 
and uh, and I made it happen. It was a six month negotiation. I got my first contract as a sixty thousand uh, dollars contract for to to travel to five countries um, uh, in 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 one year and and cover the missions that they were doing at the World Food Program. It was a huge achievement for me. So uh, when I did that, and you know the the, the amazing world. Be, that that allowed me also to reflect back on on so many things that um that we can do in our life and so on it just empowered me to it, it made me feel empowered and and i wanted to share that i wanted to share that ability to be able to to pursue a dream to achieve things that everyone tells you you cannot achieve but for that you need to take yourself seriously i'm a big fan of discipline commitment I'm a doer and uh, I've built myself like that and so why empowering women because first of all it's my gender and I felt that responsibility to towards my gender and uh, and women when I've trained myself across the years to know much more the, the, the statistics over gender inequalities yes women need that push and um, I mean, I'll ask you, I'll let you ask me more questions, but sometimes I come across women that tell me, oh, this women's empowerment thing, but don't you think it's too much? No, it's not. When we look at the numbers, we're still way behind and we're not here to emasculate men. I am a big fan of, of man. I, I work with man. Man are my allies and have, have always been my allies. It's we're empowering society through empowering women. Absolutely. I, I want to tackle two ends of what you said because there's so much meat in that. One, the UN experience. It was a childhood dream. You did it. What was the takeaway in that experience? I mean, I know you still yes. work with them. What are yes. kind of the key things that you've taken away about how you need to impact the world and how other women need to show up? Yes, so, so my mission was for the World Food Program. It wasn't for UN women, which UN women, I think at that stage was not as active as it is right now. So it was technically a multi-gender mission for uh, communities starving with hunger. Well, 90% of the people that I met through those missions were women. So, 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 so here we are when we're talking about, about topics that are linked to, 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 to hunger, that are linked to health problems, lack of education. Women are always the ones that are the most touched by it. So, uh, so what I, what it, what I took from it is the learning and the need that women at a low social level need help. But I've also been tremendously inspired by the women that were benefiting from those missions uh, because I, I got to, to speak with them, to, to really connect with them beyond just coming as, oh, you know, like I'm here to help with the United Nations, but more what, what, what do I have to learn from you? And, uh, and so, and they, they taught me so much. They have, they have a level of contentment. Those women are not unhappy. They're there. They're positive, sometimes much more positive in, in more developed, uh, communities. And they always give back to their community. They have a huge sense of responsibility. And, uh, and they struggle as entrepreneurs, but they're, they're, they're happy micro entrepreneurs. They love producing and they were lacking, of course, the knowledge of sales, distribution, branding as well at their own level. So, so I got out of it and in 2014, so this was in 2011, then stayed active, uh, with the UN and, uh, and on my own, but not through a structure from 2011 to 2014. And then I created the Meshad Foundation under the first syllabus of the names of my daughters, Mesun and Shadin. And, uh, and so, and, and that was from that learning and the experience at the WFP, um, it was focused on uh, helping women micro entrepreneurs with uh, training and uh, also capacity building to, to help them take that next level beyond the production. Um, how can they better sell? How can they better package, communicate around their, their production? 
I love it. You're doing that, your organization in New York, you've got it, uh, chapters in uh, Monaco. I know you've got chapters here in Dubai. What are some of the threads that you were seeing with women globally that are running micro businesses? And what advice would you give to a woman who's listening in about how she could maybe show up better, improve and really kind of own her brand? Yes, I think Yes, of course, the, um, the environments are different and surprisingly women struggle a lot in the US and corporations, much more than in this part of the world. Uh, in, in Europe, they have other difficulties that they're facing and here also, but they're all linked to environment. So the difference is linked to the different environment. But when it comes to, to women and their lack of confidence, it's really you, you see that same level across uh, um, the, across regions uh, in, in in the world. So so yes. Yeah, so my advice to to women is uh, get away as much as you can from from your inner feeling of guilt. We were raised to feel guilty as as women, as little girls, as women, as mothers, as on on. So guilt is really an omnipresent uh, feeling that stops us from doing many things. Let's touch on that because it's so important. You and I over, you know, cups of teas have talked about mummy guilt. Um, where do you think that comes from and how do we break free from all the guilt? The guilt of not being a good wife, the guilt of not being there as a mom, you know, the guilt. How do we break free from that? Yeah, so, so well, it, it needs practices like psychoanalysis or you know like working on ourselves deeply um and but we need to understand to get rid of something we need to understand where it comes from and it has been transmitted to us by our mothers not by our fathers mm -hmm. and so 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 this is also what we need to understand and we need to change that pattern with our daughters and a few years ago I mean, five, six years ago, I was speaking here in the region about uh, women's empowerment and, 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 you know, everyone in the room was kind of pointing out men for, for the responsibility of their lack of, 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 of that guilt. And I said, well, these men, first of all, have also been raised by women. And, and God knows, you know, that in, in the most conservative societies the mother to a man is is everything so if you had the help of your mother-in-law and and you know so we, which is not the case you know like uh, sometimes everything so so we have a huge responsibility as women to change the patterns the way we speak to our daughters mm -hmm. the way we raise our sons the way we are to other women in our environment our daughter-in-law and so on and and then when it comes to us, it's working on ourselves and understanding that this feeling is not a natural feeling that we, we feel. It's been influenced by generation and generations of pressure that is put on us. And I have, I have a very pragmatic trick to, to give to women <laughs> right now to get rid of this feeling because I've applied it to myself. When I chose to take on my new life and I have my book, Be Who You Want to Be, Be a Leader, um, where I speak about that. And so, well, out of the choice to, to do the work for the United Nations and dedicate my life to this new career and mission, I, I made the choice also to divorce, even though I was, you know, like in great term with the father of my kids, but I, really decided to abstract everything in my life that was not my daughter's and and to start a new life from there that that I'm very happy about and so 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 of course you know the friends were like why are you leaving you know like a profitable business to go and work on humanitarian um uh, projects, the family, you know, like the, the divorce, the going to Africa in places that I exposed and you have the kids and this, that. Yeah. When you, when you're about to make the biggest decisions in your life, sometimes it's just a move from one country to another. The people who love you the most and, and don't hate them for that are, are scared for you. Of so course. they're scared of the risk that you're going to take. So what I did is, decide that the limit to my freedom, I was going to measure that 
to my daughters. Mm -hmm. Actually, if my daughters cried, okay, and told me like, mommy, don't do this or don't do that, I immediately, I'll take the first plane and come. But as long as they're happy, you know, that means that I'm free to take on my time traveling for business, doing, you know, what I want and everything. And, uh, and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And, and to that, they, and I, I know QB, you know, you have your daughter and, and you're very close to her. Mm -hmm. It means a lot of communication with your kids, mm -hmm. explaining to them, not leaving them in the blind and explaining to them what your work is about and engaging them in it. Number two, being ultra organized, you need to be unicorn, <laughs> you know, and yes. so, and, and making sure that your life, whether you're there or not there, present, physically present, you, you, their life doesn't change. And, uh, and yes, and also, uh, come back home with a lot of positive, uh, vibes because yeah. kids measure, um, their own happiness to, to the, to the, the emotions uh, of their mom. They know that there is a danger if You're their panicking. mom exactly mm. is panicking mm. and take them on the journey. Yes. Because I think one of the things for me is that I have found the freedom and suppressed the guilt whenever I take Angel on the journey. Exactly. Whether that be she physically comes with me or whether that be I bring her memories from it that she can learn from. Yes. I remember when I used to travel a lot, every single time I came back, I would have a gift of, you know, the, the statue or an ornament of the country. And after a while, she had all of these little Parises and little New Yorks and everything. And she had a little Dubai. And I remember saying to her, one day we're going to live here and you're going to see this in real life. And then when we came to Dubai and she saw it, she was like, mommy, that gift, look, it's so big. And it was the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. <laughs> right? really so cool. I think also taking yeah. them on the journey. I love what you said about communication. Because communication is so important, not only with our children, but with our staff, with our stakeholders, with our investors, and also with ourselves. Take me through how important it's been that self-talk for you to be able to have the brand that you have today and the communication you have with your team. Sure, sure. Well, um, I mean, if you, if you look at, at my career, my life, uh, and, and who I am and, and, you know, and get close to me as a friend as well. You, you'll see that there is a lot of coherence in, in what I'm building and what I'm doing. And, and that's why I, I can be in front of media or quite of a thousand people and be very comfortable. Uh, so, and that's, that's communication to yourself at the core. Okay. Mm. Say that again, because it's so true, Neza. <laughs> so, so important. Of course, of course, it's easy to communicate with others if you have built a, a coherent life where you communicated with yourself throughout, and that every time that you had to to make a choice, it's not one day I'm here and the other day I'm there. It's one day I'm here and I want to diversify myself and I'm here and there is a link and then I'm here and there is a link and there is a link and everything feeds itself and you create an ecosystem in your life. Mm. And um, yes, and so that's, that's another chapter in my book on how to create uh, your, your ecosystem. And communication is really a term that I think is underrated because we hear so much about it and we take it for granted. And, and, and I see it and I will share something that is very personal is today after, um, a chosen 10 days of being divorced, I'm, I'm choosing to recommit to relationship and rebuild with a partnership. And, and so, <laughs> and how is that? <laughs> Cause you're holding on. <laughs> is that a good thing? You know, it's, <laughs> is it scary? You know, no, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing t thing when, when you can choose, when yes. you can, when it's not because you're not doing it because, you know, you, you have to be in a couple for some external reasons or you, or you're doing it out of fear. Like I can be alone. I have to be when it is a choice and it's, it's, it, it's a choice. Then you're choosing the right partner. Um, and so come and, and I'm, I'm re-exercising the communication in a couple. And, uh, because I've been fully independent for 10 years and 
not independent as as a child, as as a grown <laughs> as up a adult. adult when it comes to <laughs> <She's children. a laughs> exactly. So it's very difficult to give up on that. And I'm not finding it difficult because he's a great communicator and and I'm a great communicator and I decided to take that on as a project. The same way the same efforts that I put, the same investment at all levels that you put on projects, creative projects, humanitarian projects, business projects. Children projects. Exactly. <laughs> so it needs to be tackled as as a project. I wasn't going to go here in relationships with you, but now you've opened <laughs> yeah. the door, baby. Yes, Let's go please. there. Yes. You know, there is this myth mm -hmm. that as a powerful woman, as a beautiful woman, yeah. as a financially successful woman, as a woman with two million mm -hmm. followers on social media, that it's hard to find the right guy. Now, yeah. me personally, I think that's yeah. complete baloney. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it's baloney yeah, because yeah. I feel mm -hmm. in, the, in the same way you can have the career that you want to yeah. have, you can have the love that you want to have, yeah. you can have the parenting relationship yeah. that you want to have, right? Yeah. So for me, there's no difference. Yeah. When you want something, go get it. Yeah, totally. But for you, what are some of the adjustments that you are making to ensure that this project, this partnership is exactly what you need it to be? And what did you learn from your marriage or the divorce process yeah. that's making you better in mm -hmm. this one? Yes, for sure. I mean, um, okay. So first of all, to compare my marriage, I met the father of my kids when I was 16. Wow. Yes. So you were so child. Exactly. You know I was exactly. So already, you know, <laughs> so it was this, this, that, exactly. <laughs> and so, so that, that's the thing, you know, this was my, my childhood marriage and this is my adult marriage. Right. <laughs> and without, we, without being, you know, the case of, uh, meeting someone at 16 years old, it is the case. Our first marriage is somehow our childhood <laughs> marriage <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, you know, but you it's, have it's no idea what you're doing. <laughs> exactly. And this is a more mature one. And so, so obviously it, you, you learn, you have the maturity, you, and so that's the difference. Um, the second thing about the me that it's difficult to, to meet the right person and everything. I, I don't believe in that. I've always been, so I was, not married for the past 10 years, but I was always in a very serious relationship with extraordinary men that I didn't want to commit further because I was a global citizen and I would leave the relationship in Paris when I decided to move to New York. <laughs> and I would have probably left the relationship in New York when I decided to, to move here. Mm, and now, exactly. <laughs> but now, and, and I see it, you know, it's been, um, two years that we're together. Um, I'm really, I, I would never move somewhere without him or like, I, I'm seeing it already in the day to day choices where it is a partnership. I deal with him as, as, as a business partner and, and we want to spend the rest of our life together and we will succeed it because we need to be in the vision but also in the day-to-day -day details to achieve that vision. I love that. In the vision, but also yes. in the day-to-day -day details. I yes. love that. Let, let's talk about your book. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thank I'm you. so proud of you. Thank I just want to say to you, you, I've said it to you privately, I'm going to say it to you publicly. Thank you. The minute I met you, I was like, this oh, is a same, same here, same here. <laughs> I just fell in it. love with totally. girl class. Yeah, Because you're so formidable, yeah. right? Yes. Let's talk about the book. What are the gems that are in the book that you believe people are going to have and take away, both women, but also our male allies? Yes, yes. So, so the book, when I decided to write this book, and, and that applies to, to everyone here who has a book idea, because a lot of people have, you need to choose the, the style. And so me, my natural style to write could had been very sophisticated because I had a French education, so did a lot of philosophy classes and everything. And when I was like writing few essays here and there, I just realized like maybe it's not understandable to everyone. It's understandable to a high intellectual person who understand the depth of personalities, but not understandable to everyone. So when I decided to write be a lead, be who you want to be, be a leader, I, my challenge was I want it super simple. I want someone from seven to 77 to relate to it. 
And that's for me my achievement and what I, what I succeeded. It's very easy to read. You have many chapters. You can focus on one chapter, just one of the 12 chapters and, and get a lot of takeaway. Um, the index is, so there is the single or uh, to be or not to be single, uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. There is how to build an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And the first chapter is, leadership a concept or reality mm. because oh, again because we hear so much about leadership mm. and i had to demystify that correct what, what is it to start mm. with leadership mm. you know how mm. do we apply it to our day-to-day -day life mm. and uh, mm. and yeah so so that's what the book is about i <laughs> love that love that oh, i've got two more questions for you uh question number one what would be your top three leadership tips as a woman who is building her personal brand, whether she's leading a small team from a micro business, leading herself as a solo entrepreneur, or leading a team of, you know, kind of full team people in yeah. corporate America. Yes. yes, I mean, number one is to be a leader, you need, what is the, what is the concept? What is the, the meaning of leadership? Okay, you lead and people follow. Okay, because they're inspired, not because, you know, like you're hitting their head and you have a title or you have. So to succeed that you need, th this is the, the, the number, the base of leadership. You need to be an inspiring person. You need to lead by example. You cannot lead by telling people what to do. So that's the number one. The number two, well, to do it for a lifetime, you need to be passionate about it. You know, be passionate about what you're doing. Choose something, not because it's going to make you successful, but because this is what you're good at. And, uh, and yes, and the third thing is, is communicate about it because you can be a great leader with great values, be passionate about what you're doing. But if you're not communicating, how are you going to create that? following for people to follow you, your behavior, your advice, because sometimes if you just take the leading by, by example, so you're a great example, people want to follow that example, but it's not as easy for them to follow it as for you. So be a great communicator to also with compassion to explain to them how to succeed it. Mm. So, so that's the, the, the three. I <laughs> love that. I love that. Mind. And lastly, my darling, cause you know, you and I could talk for hours. Yeah, <laughs> as we do off camera. Yeah. Um, what's, what's your legacy? What do you want people to say? Her personal brand stood for this. What's your legacy? Yes. I think. Yeah, I, I think it's very clear when you Google me, when you know you go on my Instagram, it's I I want to to I, I always felt and this advocacy for women is to to open the path for other women to have it easier for them than it was for me or in every step. So I'm I'm always going into my next project, into doing something that is not easy to do right now because I feel empowered. So I feel I can do it. But then also with the great communication is to kind of like communicate the manual for other women to be able to do it as well. And I see a lot of change, a lot of change that I'm so proud of in the past 10 years when it comes to, to women, to entrepreneurship. When I created Meisha, the foundation, the, the hospitality business, the luxury handbag brand, the, the, we have the communication agencies and it was all about the space. I were talking to women and the, the luxury handbag brand. I mean, my purse is, is there. We would give profit. So the, the handbag brand was for, um, at a higher level, women that could afford it, that are, um, business savvy, business entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. are on the go. And yeah. so how can we create that tool for them mm -hmm. that is light, mm -hmm. not too heavy, that can take their life as a second brain that is organized at the same time and where they can take it from, from morning to evening with them because that's the reality of that, that woman. And a percentage of the, 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 the revenues are going to the foundation. So when I created that, my own entrepreneurial journey at the time, it, it wasn't something that was common to do, you know, like those things that are a little bit impact driven, creative, different. And now I see 
everyone is doing it and that's amazing you know everyone has like an amazing concept you go from one place to another you you sit with people everyone has amazing ideas when before they were like more in a very very uh less entrepreneurial type of of box so so that's something that i see across uh genders yes when it comes to women women are much more open minded about their personal life they're much less uh much less in competition with other women they 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 they, they bond there is a bonding that i'm seeing that i wasn't seeing 10 15 years ago and so the networking part i see them being much more out there and everything and so yeah and 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 you see it in in their communication the sort of media a lot of things have evolved mm-hmm. but of course we always need to support that with content like this that will give them that small tip mm. small inspiration mm. to, to get them to the next exactly to you know what i see is a beautiful thread in every part of your career where you're giving women tools to show up better whether that be the handbag and the practicality yes. of it or whether that be the book that you've got now giving them the tools around leadership or whether that be about humanitarian work giving them the tools to be better entrepreneurs and so i just want to thank you for being such a light in this world and all the tools that you're giving to women on a day to day. And I want to thank you personally, because every time I look at you, it's a reminder of another woman who's showing up, which then gives me permission to keep showing up. So please, you're please a badass. Do, please, do. <laughs> please do, exactly. Thank you so much. And, and, and yes, please, please continue doing what you're doing. I know, I mean, it's it's not easy it's never easy we're here we're showing also the 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 bright side of the journey but in that journey there is difficulty at all level for everyone i'm i've never been the type of person to think that a successful even a successful actress you know successful entrepreneurs that oh had it easy no one has it easy being a public person has also it's uh it's a downside and but but it's okay and knowing if you're the person who sees the world like that you know you have compassion towards successful people you're the person who's going to learn actually and more like observe their challenges and learn from it than just be flashed by you know the success because if you only see success everywhere and you think it's easy you you're not going to learn you're not going to sleep and wake up and be you know successful mm-hmm. one day absolutely so um yeah. absolutely but the the i often say in my speaking gigs you know the the mess is the message the pain is the catalyst to greatness you cannot be great without the messy bits yes. you cannot be great without the hard bits you know yes. so i think you're right i think more and more people need to be honest about it and open about it mm-hmm. um but i see you for it and i see the greatness through it thank so you. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you